So what I'm going to do right now is uh, go through uh, some use cases, and, and I'm going to kind of go quickly go through this. Uh, I, I recognize that this is a technical audience, and we want we have some hands-on demos. Uh, I want to get Kent up here to talk about some of the security that we're doing. But uh, again, these uh, these use cases are kind of to get the neurons flowing, to to start thinking about uh, different ways that people are using it. So. First is, uh, I call this parallel networking, but it's the notion of having a dedicated network for non-core applications. And what we found is grocery stores want to have customer Wi-Fi. Uh, and you guys are in, you know, obviously in this business, and we work with a lot of the different Wi-Fi providers. Uh, but what we're seeing is that after the target breach, they, they just don't, a lot of them don't trust logical partitioning, logical network segments. And so, and you're starting to see PCI compliance with 3.1 specs start to call out requirements for putting certain applications on parallel networking. And so, in this example, what we're doing is helping customers create um, Wi-Fi, customer Wi-Fi, using 4G as the backhaul. And none of it is going through their corporate network. None of it's going through their data center. It's completely separate. <laughs> yeah. I, I see the problem. The solution scares the pants off me. That's metered data, yeah, and we're giving it to the public. Yep, that's that's like the worst of both sides on, on one side. I, I see th there is a problem, but but I would have flipped it around and said, put the corporate where I have control over the flow. Well, you're reading to my next slide. Oh, okay. <laughs> my job. No, I mean you're you're absolutely right. I mean uh, the 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 usage is a big factor, and what we're seeing is data costs are coming down. This is one of the reasons. Uh, I think cable Wi-Fi and Wi-Fi offload in small cell is going to be a game changer because when you can start to offload this, uh, and, and frankly, a retail store isn't moving, <laughs> and so if there are, if you can access it through um, cable Wi-Fi, uh, it's an interesting story. But even on the carrier side, uh, this is where tying this together with content filtering, uh, the ability to say these are the applications I'm going to allow. I'm not going to allow Netflix. Uh, I'm not going to allow you know certain things that that are high bandwidth. That's where it becomes manageable as an option. You have but, that firewall bandwidth throttling AVC kind of control in your routers as well. Yeah, yeah. This is this is again this is what we've been doing over the last six years is really uh, you know and I have we have different capabilities, different platforms, some that are purpose built for these fixed locations. Um, but yes. And on that on that note, I know that some of the some of the carriers I'm I'm working with a number of different entities where we're doing something similar to, to this, not the same. Um, but a lot of them, when you work with the carriers, some of their their business contracts that you sign up for are for unlimited data, and they're I mean they're rather expensive, but at the same time they don't they're a non-metered service. It's it's all on. Yeah, there and and that's a very good point. And we don't call out which companies have those, but. Uh, it's, it's, I'm, I'm always impressed at what some of the larger companies are able to negotiate. Well, I mean, you pay for it. I mean, it's $500,000 a month, but it's unlimited service. Yeah. And public safety applications, there are some where they, they actually get unlimited for, uh, because it's a public safety application. So, uh, The other thing I'd say about this is all, all of the cradle point devices have Wi-Fi in them. Uh, but, you know, we're, we're not a ruckus. We're not... Um, Someone that you're not going to put a cradle point device in a stadium or in a Walmart and cover the the whole wall, you know the, the whole store. So we play well with others, and, and we have numerous instances where we're powering the back end of Ruckus, Aruba, Aerohive, Airtight, uh, you know the other solutions. And in some cases, they're using it as primary network. In other cases, uh, they're offering customer Wi-Fi as a separate network using something like a separate cable feed separate drop uh, with the 4G as a backup. So going to your point, uh, Waffle House uh, is a customer, they did exactly the opposite. They <laughs> removed the point of sale devices off of their corporate network. They said there are too many threat vectors to get in that corporate network. Rogue employees, someone walking up and putting a USB stick in or some sort of skimmer in the router. And so their strategy was put the point of sale devices on a, on a 4G network and really lock that down, physically lock it down, uh, but also have it be separate. And then uh, that, that's their point of sale strategy. And I think it was actually a very interesting one and I thought very visionary because uh, 
if you're looking at these pivot attacks, target style, and we just, uh, all of us have read kind of the Brian Krebs thing he uh, wrote last week. Um, it was a pretty flat network, and, and Kent will talk about that a little bit more, but that was a pretty easy one for those hackers to defeat once they compromised the HVAC vendor's laptops and got the credentials to log in. MPLS replacement. Um, if you're an existing enterprise that's using MPLS, you're probably going to keep using it. it. No matter how much money you could save, it's just they, a lot of these folks feel it's just too risky to touch it. But if you're a greenfield opportunity, and this is one from uh, comp it's the fastest growing quick serve restaurant company in the nation called Raising Canes, uh, why would you go to MPLS if you don't have to? And so they, their strategy was use cable in 4G so that you get the, uh, the availability and reliability by having two separate networks that aren't buried in the same trench. We have not yet found a squirrel that can bite through wires, wireless. But the other part of it is, uh, is on the cost side. Just standard broadband is just so cost effective compared to MPLS. And, um, and so this is how they rolled out. Uh, this was an interesting one. one of the, uh, this was a reference from one of the top analysts in the world who covers LAN, WAN space. And I got an email from him and he goes, Ken, I'm sending Raisin Cane's your way. This is a test. And uh, we did so well with this opportunity that Raising Cane's, the CIO for Raising Cane's Vents, came into the Cradle Point booth at the beginning of this year in the National Retail Federation and did booth duty for us for two days, <laughs> talking to IT directors and other uh, CIOs about um, how important this was to their business. Um, and I think, you know, we're going to another conference next week, Gartner, uh, their IT expo with all the top analysts, and uh, we're, I think he may be joining us there too. But this, this was a big uh, reference case. Now, this is unusual for us because, uh, I shouldn't say unusual, but they're using this as their, they're using Cradle Point as the primary router. And, uh, you know, again, in our, as we've been growing, we've started off with these auxiliary uses, like the failover, or something for a bus, or something for digital sign or kiosk. But this is an example of, of um, uh, how we've really been uh, able to add all of the enterprise functionality that you need to be a good router that would sit in these enterprises. Temporary locations. Uh, this happens to be a pop-up retail store, Spirit Halloween. If you're going to open up shop for two months, you're going to find a vacant building. Uh, so it just doesn't make sense to go deal with wired connectivity. So this this is a great way for that for enterprises to pop up, you know, an extra Toys R Us for the holiday season, Halloween, etc. Uh, connectivity where wires aren't available. I talked about the Hurricane Sandy example. <coughs> But statistically, there are, uh, there are locations that are very, very hard to reach. And a lot of, t a lot of these locations, their only alternative is uh, expensive satellite. And there's a lot of companies that still use VSAT that are trying to replace it. But it's just a, our, our target customer tends to congregate where people are. And where people are, that's usually where the uh, 3G, 4G cellular networks are. And so it works out fairly well for that. Here's an example of a... C store, a convenience store fuel operator in Southern California, United Oil, that has 130 locations. And what they realized is to cover their 130 locations, uh, they had to use, um, you know, over a couple dozen of wired service providers. And some of them were mom and pop type providers that weren't all that reliable. And so they just cut the cord. They said, we're not going to deal with that. We want to go all wireless. We'll pick one carrier, in this case Verizon, and they're running the whole enterprise on it. So they're, they're doing the point of sale devices, the, uh, the gas pump, you know, the, the level in the fuel tanks pass through this network. And uh, they're very happy with it. And they said it's not only is it easier to manage, but they said it's much more reliable. Um, we'll get into some of the reliability on LTE later. Store within a store. This is a, uh, a Jackson Hewitt tax station in Walmart. And around tax season, what Jackson Hewitt does is they roll this thing in there and they do prepare people's tax returns. And if there's a refund, they give it to the customer on a Walmart gift certificate and kind of point them to the back of the store to go spend it. Walmart does not, especially after the target breach, Walmart does not want third parties on their corporate network. Jackson Hewitt, which has sensitive customer financial data, does not want their 
uh, their information on the Walmart network. It's, it's a perfect win-win opportunity. And the store within a store, I'll carry it over to the next slide. If you walk into a Walmart today, you'll likely find between 12 and 15 cradle point routers uh, with various third parties. You'll find it on uh, kiosks, greeting card kiosks, blood pressure monitoring machine, key duplication, some of the carriers, if they're selling smartphones in there, uh, talked about the Jackson Hewitt. Uh, you have ATMs, lottery machines. One of my favorite examples is Walmart themselves. If you go buy a fishing license in a Walmart, you're going to the sporting goods department, and it's a state government system. The state government issues the, uh, the licenses, and Walmart does not trust the state government to secure their network from, from uh, ingress. And so they use a separate cradle point router to power that, uh, that hunting and fishing license terminal so it doesn't touch their network. We call this bring your own networking, BYON. And then uh, I'll just touch on the business continuity case. Um, network failover, I think uh, one of our bigger customers is Yum Brand. So all the, every Taco Bell, Pizza Hut, Kentucky Fried Chicken, and they, had, they were using POTS lines as failover. And they were paying $60 a month. And uh, they went to a managed service provider, uh, some of the big ones that are out there, and asked for proposals for something better. And what they ended up deploying was Cradle Point Bridge. Again, they already had a perfectly good Cisco router. Uh, so a Cradle Point Bridge that they were able to plug into the back of that Cisco router. And they negotiated uh, failover data plans so they can pool data across all of their you know, 10,000 plus locations. And they were able to cut their cost, ROI the whole thing, within about six months based on the, the savings of getting, that, getting rid of the $60 uh, POTS line. 